Hey guys, it's me, Tracy Lene, reading again from the Game of Life and how to play it. We are on the chapter, Intuition or Guidance. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. There is nothing too great of accomplishment for the man who knows the power of his word and who follows his intuitive leads. By the word, he starts in action unseen forces and can rebuild his body or remold his affairs. It is therefore of the utmost importance to choose the right words, and the student carefully selects the affirmation he wishes to catapult into the invisible. He knows that God is his supply, and that there is a supply for every demand, and that his spoken word releases this supply. Ask, and ye shall receive. Man must make the first move. Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. I've often been asked just how to make a demonstration. I reply, speak the word and then do not anything until you get a definite lead. Demand the lead saying, infinite spirit, reveal to me the way. Let me know if there's anything for me to do. And of course, you can use whatever name you choose of God, but ask God. Reveal to me the way. Let me know if there's anything for me to do. But you've got to get silent and quiet to make that happen. The answer will come through intuition or a hunch, a chance remark from someone or a passage in a book. The answers are sometimes quite startling in their exactness. For example, a woman desired a large sum of money. She spoke the word, infinite spirit, open the way for my immediate supply. Let all that is mine by divine right now reach me in, a, in great avalanches of abundance. Then she added, give me a definite lead. Let me know if there's anything for me to do. The thought came quickly. Give a certain friend who had helped her spiritually a hundred dollars. She told her friend who said, wait and get another lead before giving it. So she waited and that day met a woman who said to her, I gave someone a dollar today. It was just as much for me as it would be for you to give someone a hundred. This was indeed an unmistakable lead. So she knew she was right in giving the hundred dollars. And remember, the friend didn't know she was saying that. God does that. You'll be like, how'd you know that? It's not them. It's the God in them telling you what God wants you to know. It was a gift which proved great investment. For shortly after that, a large sum of money came to her in a remarkable way. Giving opens the way for receiving. In order to create activity and finances, one should give. Tithing or giving one-tenth of one's income is an old Jewish custom and is sure to bring increase. Many of the richest men in the country have been tithers, and I have never known it to fail as an investment. The tenth part goes forth and returns blessed and multiplied, but the gift or tithe must be given with love and cheerfulness, for God loveth the cheerful giver. Bills should be paid cheerfully. All money should be sent forth fearlessly and with blessing. This is the attitude of mind that makes man master of his money. It is his to obey, and his spoken word then opens vast resources of wealth. Man himself limits his supply by his limited vision. Sometimes a student has a great realization of wealth, but is afraid to act. The vision and action must go hand in hand, as in the case of the man who brought the fur-lined overcoat. Remember him, the one who only had $700, and he spent $500 on a coat because he knew it was going to make him rich, and then it did make him rich? That man in another chapter. A woman came to me asking me to speak the word for a position. So I demanded, infinite spirit, open the way for this woman's right position. Never just ask for a position. Ask for the right position, the place already planned in divine mind, as it is the only one that would give satisfaction. I then gave thanks that she had already received and that it would manifest quickly. Very soon, she had three positions offered to her two in New York and one in Palm Beach, and she did not know which one to choose. I said, ask for a definite lead. The time was almost up and she was still undecided. When one day she telephoned, when I woke up this morning, I could smell Palm Beach. She had been there before and knew the balmy fragrance. I replied, well, if you can smell Palm Beach from here, it is certainly your lead. She accepted the position and it proved a great success. Often one's lead comes at an unexpected time. One day I was walking down the street when suddenly I felt a strong urge to go to a certain bakery a block or two away. The reasoning mind resisted arguing, there is nothing there that you want. 
However, I had learned not to reason, so I went to the bakery, looked at everything, and there was certainly nothing there that I wanted. But coming out, I encountered a woman I had often thought of, and who was in great need of help, which I could give her. So often, one goes for one thing and finds another. That's that thing where you think you want something until you get that thing. You go, that's not what I wanted. But then you see along the way the thing that you wanted. Intuition is a spiritual faculty and does not explain, but simply points the way. A person often receives a lead during a treatment. The idea that comes may seem quite irrelevant, but some of God's leadings are mysterious. In, in the class one day, I was treating that I was treating that each individual would receive a definite lead. A woman came to me afterwards and said, while you were treating, I got the hunch to take my furniture out of storage and get an apartment. The woman had come to be treated for health. I told her I knew that in getting a home of her own, her health would improve. And I added, I believe your trouble, which is the congestion, has come from having things stored away. Congestion of things causes congestion in the body. You have violated the law of use and your body is paying the penalty. So I gave thanks that divine order was established in her mind, body, and affairs. People little dream of how their affairs react on the body. There is mental correspondence for every disease. There is a mental correspondence for every disease. Get the book, Louise Hay, How to Heal Your Life, and it'll tell you each thing that's going on with you. You can see what that connects to in your body. A person might receive instantaneous healing through the realization of his body being a perfect idea in divine mind and therefore whole and perfect. But if he continues his destructive thinking, hoarding, hating, fearing, condemning, the disease will return because dis-ease is just a dis-ease in your body. Whatever is going on in your body is started up here in that beautiful, wonderful mind of yours. So heal it in the beautiful, wonderful mind and it'll heal everything else. When we are people who overeat, it's because we're overthinking or we're trying to hide some sin or some shame. And food is, acts like a dopamine that allows you to relax your brain because then you're always in like a fog and you're not really thinking about the thing as intense, but it's still there. So you might as well put the fork down, pick up the Bible, the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, meditation, something to deal, a therapist, deal with that trauma. Tapping will definitely help you do it. And we talked about tapping before. It's EFT, emotional freedom technique you can look it up um on youtube just type in eft and you'll find some good stuff jesus christ knew that all sickness came from sin but admonished the leaper after healing to go and sin no more lest the worst thing come upon him so man's soul or subconscious mind must be washed whiter than snow for permanent healing and a metaphysician is always delving deep for the correspondence Jesus Christ said, condemn not, least ye also be condemned. Don't be condemning people because your stuff won't come to light. Because when you start condemning people, your stuff is going, oh, we're dealing with that now. Let me go ahead and show her hers. Or we're going to talk about that. We're judging people. Let me give her her judgment because she's judging or he's judging. Judge not, least ye be judged. And there is a difference from offering your opinion when asked than judging someone. Judging someone is rendering a verdict, saying, he is a liar. He is this. Those are judgments. You don't have a right. If somebody is telling a lie, yeah, you could say, well, you're telling a lie about that. You become a liar when you continuously lie. Not one lie makes you a liar, but continuously lying does make you a liar. So if you're saying, well, you're, you know that the person is a liar, but then you're rendering a judgment, like you should get this or this should happen to you. That's not what you should do. Many people have attracted disease and unhappiness through condemnation of others. What man condemns in others, he attracts to himself. I have learned in my 55 years that let people do what they do. God got them just like God got me. I don't have to render a judgment. I can kiki and laugh about it with my friends. Uh, I can, you know, not like talking about one friend to another friend. I mean, like talking about celebrity gossip and we just laughing and joking about it. That's harmless, and we let it go quickly, just something really quick, and we don't attach ourselves to it. Many people have attracted disease and unhappiness through condemnation of others. What man condemns in others, he attracts to himself. For example, a friend came to me in anger and distress because her husband had deserted her for another woman. She condemned the other woman and said continuously, she knew he was a married man and had no right to accept his attentions. But guess who also knew he was a married man? Him. He was there. When y'all got married, he was there. She wasn't. So he damn sure know he was a married man. Stop blaming her and blame him. Whatever's going to happen to her, it's going to happen to her. But understand this. He left his wife for this other woman. Now that other woman's position is open because we already know the type of person he is. So he's going to fill it with somebody else. And she's going to feel 
that is that that pain and that stuff and that suffering from dealing with a man who has no character i reply stop condemning the woman bless her and be through with the situation otherwise you are attracting the same thing to yourself be through with the situation let it go because it's going to come back to them they're not they're not walking off on some enchanted evening no they may be the right fit i also believe this sometimes people are not the right fit for one another and they meet their right fit and they don't go about it the right way and they'll be okay later but they will get the karma for what they did but your karma comes from how you react see people do things through you to see what's going to come out of you okay it's just bringing out what's in you if that person leaves whether it's a male or female say i pray that they get everything that they deserve to heal the pain that's in them and, and life be good for them because that's what's that's what you're really saying the prayers that you utter are really for yourself she was deaf to my words and a year or two later became deeply interested in a married man herself because she's running around judging people Man picks up a live wire whenever he criticizes or condemns and may expect shock. Indecision is a stumbling block and many uh, a pathway. In order to overcome it, make the statement repeatedly. I am always under direct inspiration. I make right decisions quickly. I'll say it slower. I am always under direct inspiration. I make right decisions quickly. These words impress the subconscious and soon one finds himself awake and alert making his right moves without hesitation. I have found it destructive to look to the psychic plane for guidance, as it is the plane of many minds and not the one mind. I'm not a psychic. On every Sunday, I do readings with, with uh, cards. I haven't in, uh, interest, uh, introduced tarot to it yet, but I do have oracle cards. But I'm just reading energy. I'm not telling you what's definitely going to happen. It's just an energetic plane. So much can happen on an energetic plane. As man opens his mind to subjectivity, but I'm not saying people aren't psychic, and I'm not judging psychics, because I'm just not one of them. As man opens his mind to subjectivity, he becomes a target for destructive forces. The psychic plane is the result of man's mortal thoughts and is on the plane of opposites. He may receive either good or bad messages. The science of numbers and the reading of horoscopes keep man down on the mental or moral plane, for they deal only with the karmic path. I know of a man who should have been dead years ago, according to his horoscope, but he is alive and a leader of one of the biggest movements in this country for the uplift of humanity. It takes a very strong mind to neutralize a prophecy of evil. The student should declare, every false prophecy shall come to naught. Every plan my father in heaven has not planned shall be dissolved and dissipated, and the divine idea now comes to pass. I'll say it slower, so you might want to repeat it out loud. Every false prophecy shall come to naught. Every plan my father in heaven has not planned shall be dissolved and dissipated. The divine idea now comes to pass. And you may not feel that you have a divine father. You may have a divine mother. Whatever name you use, the power is in the words. So use the words that work for you. However, if, if any good message has ever been given one, a covenant of happiness or wealth, harbor and expect it. It will manifest sooner or later through the law of expectancy. Man's will should be used to back the universal will. I will that the will of God be done. It is God's will to give to every man, every rightful desire of his heart. And man's will should be used to hold the perfect vision without wavering. The prodigal son said, I will arise and go to my father. It is indeed often an effort of the will to lead the husk and swine of moral thinking. It is so much easier for the average person to have fear than faith, as faith is an effort of the will. And people are lazy. We want things to come to us so fast. We want to order a coffee and drive up to the place and the coffee be sitting there. We don't want to spend any time waiting for anything. And that's not a good thing. We have to, what you rushing for? The end result is you're going to be in the grave. So what you rushing everything for? Slow down. As man becomes spiritually awakened, he recognizes that any external inharmony is the correspondence of mental inharmony. If he stumbles or falls, he may know a stumbling or falling in conscious. consciousness. One day, a student walking along the street condemning someone in her thoughts, she was saying mentally, that woman is the most disagreeable woman on earth. When, she, when suddenly three Boy Scouts rused or rushed around the corner and almost knocked her over. She did not condemn the Boy Scouts, but immediately called on the law of forgiveness and, and saluted the divinity in the woman. Wisdom, all wisdom's ways are of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. 
we know people have, you know, negative sides, but we don't have to dwell on it because in dwelling on it, we are sitting in the negativity. We don't want that. When one has made his demands upon the universal, he must be ready for surprises. Everything may seem to be going wrong when in reality it's going right. In order for some things, you know, there have to be a new building, have to tear down the old building type of mentality or type of thing. That's what's going on in your mentality. And things have to be torn down. So you have to see a different way and a different path in order for it to happen. For example, a woman was told that there was no loss in divine mind. Therefore, she could not lose anything which belonged to her. Anything lost would be returned or she would receive its equivalent. When I had a stillborn, I had two children, I had Aleem and Azana, and then I was pregnant and it almost uh, seven and a half months, um, the baby didn't make it. It was a boy. And we went and I had to actually give birth to him. And when I did, when I looked at him, my husband was standing on my left side and I felt his tears dropping on my arm. And I looked up and I said, you took my son, give me my son back. I said that to God just like that you took my son give me my son back and and the people in the room thought I was thinking that this baby was going to somehow become alive no I knew that I meant I wanted my son back and 11 months later I gave birth to Majid because God gave me back my son because I said give me back my son I then um was pregnant again and and you think no this can only happen once a few years later at uh, almost eight months I experienced the same thing, but he lived for 10 minutes. When we went in to do the ultrasound, and I knew it was a boy and we thought everything was fine. But then when I had to, my water broke very early, wasn't enough time. I'm sorry, it wasn't, it was right almost eight months. He, <clears throat> they knew that there was some problems going on. Anyway, long story long, he was born and he lived for 10 minutes. And I said to God, I said, I want you to give me a daughter. And you took my baby. Not took, because I don't think God took, but this is happening to me. This is a part of my path, and I get it. I'm going to have another child, but this time send me a girl. And let their, these two boys be up there in the spirit world, taking care, watching over their siblings. And then I had Taraji. Where was I at? Okay, we were talking about the, that was just one talking about getting the equipment and getting other things. Several years previously, she had lost $2,000. She had loaned the money to a relative during her lifetime, but the relative had died, leaving no mention of it in her will. The woman was resentful and angry as she had no written statement of the transaction. Now, remember, this is in the 30s, so $2,000 was like $10,000 or maybe even more. She never received the money, so she, deter she determined to deny the loss and collected $2,000 from the Bank of the Universal. She had to begin by forgiving the woman as resentment and unforgiveness closed the doors of this wonderful bank. Now, the lady done died, and you mad at her for dying? Okay. She made this statement. I deny loss. There is no loss in divine mind. Therefore, I cannot lose the $2,000 which belonged to me by divine right. As one door shuts, another door opens. She was living in an apartment house which was for sale, and in the lease was a clause stating that if the house was sold, tenants would be required to move out within 90 days. Suddenly, the landlord broke the lease and raised the rent. Again, injustice was on her pathway, but this time she was undisturbed. She blessed the landlord and said, as the rent has been raised, it means that I'll be that much richer, for God is my supply. Now, leases were made out of now, leases were made out for the advance rent, but by some divine mistake, the 90-day clause had been forgotten. Soon after, the landlord had an opportunity to sell the house. On account of the mistake in the new lease, the tenant had the possession for another year. And that's because he was doing people dirty. And when you do people dirty, you're going to get yours. The agent offered each tenant $200 if he would vacate. Several families moved. Because back then, $200 was like $1,000. I'm assuming. I know it's a lot. Several families, families moved. Three remained, including the woman. A month or two passed, and the agent again appeared. This time, he said to the woman, will you break your lease for the sum of $1,500? And it flashed upon her. Here comes that $2,000. She remembered having said to a friend in the house, we will all act together if, any more, if anything more is said about leaving. So her lead was to consult her friends. These friends said, well, if they have offered you $1,500, they will certainly give $2,000. So she received a check for $2,000 for giving up the apartment. It was certainly a remarkable working of the law. 
and the, and the apparent injustice was merely opening the way for a demonstration. Whenever something is going a certain way, it's trying to teach you more about yourself. How are you going to react to it? The better you react to it, the better the outcome of the situation. It proved that there is no loss. And when man takes his spiritual stand, he collects all that is his from his great reservoir of good. I will restore you the years the locusts have eaten. Yes, anything taken from you, it's coming back and it's coming back better. The locusts are the doubts, fears, resentments, and regrets of mortal thinking. These adverse thoughts alone rob man, for no man gives himself, no man gives to himself but himself, and no man takes away from himself but himself. Man is here to prove God and to bear witness to the truth, and he can only prove God by bringing plenty out of lack and justice out of injustice. Prove me now, hereworth, said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you to the windows of heavens and pour out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Thank you for listening to today's reading. Tomorrow, perfect self-expression or the divine design. I am reading, and look, guys, I've had this book since uh, 1987. And now the back is off. This book will be very treasured and, and have notes and stuff in it because it is very, 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 very beneficial in how I live my life at 55 years old. <clears throat> Excuse me. I <clears throat> I've <clears throat> ooh, <clears throat> I've had this book for so long, and I overread it over and over and over and over with other books. Thank you for listening. I would love it if you like this video, if you subscribe to my channel, and if you like to share it. Have an amazing, amazing. It's Monday. Have an amazing Monday. Remember, my, I don't know if you saw my reading, but yesterday, this week, expect miracles. Mother Mary is going to bring you a miracle. This week, understand that soft is strong, okay? You don't have to be all aggressive. Just be content, but watch your back. I said watch your back, but not in the way like you think. Like Just be aware of people. Don't be very naive. It's not good to be naive, of course. I love you guys. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.